Hi and welcome to Vinex Studio. Today we'll be seeing how to create an FPS game in Unity from scratch. So we'll be seeing everything step by step. First we'll see how to set up the camera so that it is in the first person view. Then we'll see how to set up the gun, the crosshair. And then we'll see how to move the player. Then we'll also see how to use the mouse to make the player look around. And finally we'll be creating a shooting script for the gun to be able to fire. And if it is an enemy, we'll destroy the enemy. And if it is any other game object, we'll just spawn bullet holes on it. For the purpose of this tutorial, I have downloaded three assets. One is the low poly weapons light. The next is this industrial arena. Then the crosshair. All these three are free in Unity Asset Store. So I'll leave the link in the description. If you want to follow along, you can download it. Apart from this, I've created this bullet hole image using paint. So this is something I've drawn myself. Then I've downloaded this gunshot sound from freesound.org. The link is there in the description. So if you want, you can download that too. So with all the materials ready, let's get started. So what we have here is just the camera in the arena. The first thing that we need to add is the player game object. So we'll create an empty game object, call it player. Then we'll add a capsule collider to it. So let's zoom in on the player. So the capsule collider is now spherical in shape because there's no game object inside it. So let's increase the height to two. So this looks like a player. So I'm just going to bring it down somewhere here. Uh, make sure the capsule collider is little bit above the ground because we'll be adding a rigid body to it. And if it is already colliding with the ground, when you start your game, it will fall through the ground. So we don't want that to be happening. So let's go ahead and add a rigid body. Now on the head of the player should be your camera. So let's bring our camera. Let's just copy this component. Copy position. And then let's go to the camera and then we'll say paste position. So now the camera is here, but we want the camera to be a little bit higher, something like this. Okay, so that it's exactly where the head of the player would be. So we can even go a little more higher. Okay, so after that is done, you can just drag the camera and make it as a child of the player. Uh, the reason we are making it a child of the player is because we want the camera to move along with the player. So this is how our game will look like from the eyes of the player. So the first thing that we need for any FPS is the weapon. So let's go and add an empty game object. We'll call this as weapon. Now once the weapon is added, we'll just go to our low poly weapon slide and we'll go into the prefabs and select this weapon and make it as a child of our weapon. So let's go to the scene view so that we'll be able to see how the weapon is pointing. So we also want the game view to adjust the weapon's position and the direction. So let's put the game view somewhere here. So this is how it should look. So adjust your weapon so that it is properly looking like an FPS game. So once that is done, the next part is adding a cursor. So for that, we'll be using a UI. So go ahead and add a UI image. Let's call it cursor. Okay. Then make sure the anchor is at the center. So let's go to the scene view, select the UI. So the UI in the corner here, but we want the UI to be at the center. So set the position to zero in the X and zero in the Y. Now the UI is in the center. Now the next thing we need to do is just select a cursor from the package that we downloaded. I'll assign this crosshair to the source image. Let's go to the game view. The cursor is white in color and it's bigger in size. So we'll set it to 50 cross 50 seems to be okay but it is not visible because of the white color so let's set it to something like red okay so now the cursor is fine and our game view we are able to see the cursor properly the gun is good so this concludes the visual part of the game so everything looks like an fps 
Next, we'll start moving the player. So select the player and create a script called player controller. So I have a player controller script ready for us. So I'm just going to drag and drop it here. So this has the movement script. It has the mouse look script. It has the jump script and the shooting script. We'll go through them one by one. So let's open the script. So this script is available on my next studio. The article link is there in the description. You can just go and copy this, but you'll learn more if you make it from scratch. So what we are doing here is we are just taking the rigid body component and the audio source component. And for the player moment, we have a function called player moment. Let's see what we do inside player moment. We are using two floats, X force and Z force, because we will be moving in the X and Z axis. And we are taking the horizontal axis, that is the keyboard left and right arrows, multiplying that with the move speed and assigning it to the X force. Similarly, we are taking the vertical, that is the up and down arrows, multiplying that with the move speed and then assigning that to the Z force. Then we are taking the Z force and multiplying that with the transform dot forward, which is basically the forward direction of our player. Then we'll take the transform dot right and multiply that with the X force. Now this part, we'll discuss about this part when we come to the jump script. So this will be enough to move the player. So if you go back to Unity and now before we try to move the player, we don't want the player to basically tumble and fall because we are applying force. So we'll just make sure that the player does not rotate in the X and Z direction due to force. So now if we play the game, so the player is here and the player is able to move. So next comes the look script. So this is the look around script. We have a function called look around. It is called in the update look around. So what look around does is it takes the Y axis of the mouse and applies the rotation to the camera and not to the player because we don't want to make the player upside down. We only want to rotate the player in the Y axis. So the X axis that is the player looking up and down is done by rotating the camera and not the player. We also need to make sure that the player is not able to turn the head upside down. So the rotation of the camera is clamped at minus 80 and plus 80. That is, it will be able to go 80 degrees upward and 80 degrees downwards. So that is what these three statements do. That is, we take the camera rotation. We, we have a variable called camera rot. It's a vector three. And we take the initial rotation and assign it to the vector three camera rot. Then for the X axis, we add the mouse Y moment that multiplied with our look speed. This look speed is nothing but mouse sensitivity. Then we try to clamp it. The reason the expression looks different is since you're working with Euler angles, any angle that is greater than 180 degrees should be subtracted from by 360 degrees. So what we're doing, if the angle is greater than 180, we're subtracting that with 360 and then clamping the whole value within minus 80 and plus 80. So this takes care of the my moment that is looking up and down. Now for looking left and right, we are going to rotate the player. So we are having one more vector three player rot. We are just taking the mouse input in the X axis, multiplying that with mouse sensitivity, that is look speed, and then rotating the player based on that. So this takes care of the rotating and the movement part. Next comes the jump part. Now we have a complete video on how to ground check using the box cast. So you can check that video out if you have any questions. So what we are doing is we are going to box cast from the center of the player to the foot of the player. And we're going to see if that collides with the ground. We have marked all the game objects that are basically ground as ground. And we have created a layer called ground and we have marked all those game objects as ground. We're going to box cast and see if the box cast hits something called as a ground. If it does, then we are saying that the player is grounded. Otherwise, we'll make the player jump. So the jump script is inside the update itself. So we're just saying if ground check, that is the box cast function. And if the player has pressed the space key, then we're going to add a force in the upward direction. Now this brings us to the player moment script where we were saying we had added a Y velocity. So if you don't add this Y velocity, we are basically setting the Y velocity to zero using these two. So in order to negate these two, we're going to add this one. This basically takes in the, the actual velocity of the player and assigns it to the player moment. So that way, when we add force, the player will be able to jump. 
Now, if you want to increase the fall speed of the jump, you can increase the mass of the player or increase the gravity. So with that done, the player will also be able to jump. For a proper box casting, you will have to go and set up the box size. So we have an extra function here called on draw gizmos. So this will basically draw the box at the maximum distance. That is the distance up to which you're going to box cast. So we'll have to go back to Unity, then go to the scene view, find the player. So now you can see there is no box here. So since we have used the on draw gizmos function, if we set the box size to something like one, one, and one, so which is actually bigger than the player. So make sure the box size is smaller than the player. So we'll just reduce it by half. Okay. And then we want to box cast to the foot of the player. So you have to increase the max distance value for that. Let's say one. So now the box is actually colliding with the ground. So we'll be able to know when the player is basically grounded. So that takes care of the movement of the player completely. That is, we are able to move the player. We are able to look around and we are able to jump. So this brings us to the shooting part. For the purpose of shooting, we'll not be using bullets because spawning bullets and destroying them actually produces a lot of garbage. So what we're going to do is we're going to ray cast from the camera position in the forward direction. And if we hit a game object that is tagged as enemy, we'll destroy it. And if we don't, we hit any other game object, then we're going to spawn a prefab called bullet hole. Now for the bullet hole, what you can do is just add a plane. So you can see here, I've added a plane. To that, I've added a material. And the material basically takes the image that I created in paint. I've assigned the image to albedo and set the rendering mode to cut out. So that creates my material here. And I've just used the Unity's default plane and assigned the material to it. Now in our player controller script, what we are doing here, if the player presses the input mouse button and we have a boolean called can fire this boolean is used for controlling the rate of fire if the mouse button is held down and you should see here that we are using get mouse button and not get mouse button down so if you use get mouse button down then this will be called only once when the mouse button is pressed down and if you are holding the mouse it will not fire so when you're holding the mouse and if can fire is true what it does is this ray cast from the camera position in the forward direction for 300 units. And then it also plays the audio, the confair audio. Then this confair.play is basically a particle system for creating the effect of confair. Then if we hit a collider and the collider is basically an enemy, then you destroy it. And if you hit a collider and it is not an enemy, then you're going to instantiate the bullet hole. Now the bullet hole should basically face the player and it should be perpendicular to the, this is the prefab, the bullet hole. The hit dot point is the position where the ray cast hit the collider. Then for the rotation, we're going to use quaternion dot from to rotation. That is it will rotate the bullet from its up position to hit dot normal is the perpendicular direction for that. Now, after firing one bullet, we are going to set can fire to false. We are going to invoke a function called fire rate reset, and we are also stopping the particle animation from paying. Now, for the particle animation, you just go and create a effect particle system, and we are going to say this is can fire. Okay. So we'll just see it here. So this one's going to be fairly simple because the particles are not going to move. So we'll set the start speed to zero. Then we'll set the lifetime to something very short like 0.1, duration to 0.1. We don't want it to loop, so remove looping. Then emission is not going to be rate over time. It's going to be just then burst and the count can be 30 or you can have reduced number of counts and you can increase the size. So you can do it either way. You can have smaller particles and more number of particles, or you can have larger particles and less number of particles. The shape is going to be sphere. Okay. Now we'll just move this to the tip of the gun. So
okay so that is the position so you can see that the size is very big so we'll reduce the radius of the shape radius so i'll make it like 0.2 so now we'll see if we play so that looks fine only thing the color is not is white we don't want white colors we want orange colors so we'll select the color to orange and plus close this and we'll play still this looks a little bigger to me so we'll reduce this uh, start size to like 0.5 okay so that seems to be fine okay so now we have everything set up just select the player go down we have to assign the bullet hole and the particle effect so we'll make the particle uh, child of the weapon okay where's the weapon it's the camera and yeah child of the weapon so that it moves with the gun now let's select the player and assign the particle system and in the particle system make sure you have unchecked play on a wick so we don't want it to play as soon as it wakes up now with everything ready we have to add an audio source for the gunshot okay so we're going to call it as audio so the component name is audio source and make sure you uncheck play on awake so add an audio source component to it and uncheck play on awake then the sound that we downloaded from freesound.org just assign that here so that being done i think we can now play the game So you can see that now it is able to fire and the bullet holes are actually spawned so it will be much more with so if something like this happens that is basically because the rigid body is rotating because of a force so to solve this issue make sure you enable all the constraints in the rigid body rotation constraints or you increase the angular drag so since we are not going to use force to rotate the player, we are just using the quaternion. We can just freeze the rotation in all x, y, and z axis. So we'll move. Okay, the player is moving at a very slow pace. Start fire. Yeah, we are able to see bullet holes. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Then I had marked that container as enemy, so it was destroyed. Okay. So only thing the problem seems like we are not able to jump so most probably if you're not able to jump it is because the jump force is very less so you want to go to the player controller script and set the jump force to something larger like 300 so set the jump force and set the layer mask to ground and now if you play the game now we're able to jump we're able to shoot we're able to turn we're able to move we have a good cursor and i've set the container as enemy so if i fire the enemy is destroyed and all the other game objects will basically spawn bullet holes okay so that's it we have created an fps game from the scratch so you can get all the code samples from my next studio and the link to all the resources is there in the description try creating your own fps and if you have any other question Feel free to leave them in the comment box below.